Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, Mishpocha. Welcome to our home on this very special Friday night, Arab Shabbat. We are so encouraged tonight as we seek the things above and not the things that are going on in the earth, on the earth and all around us, on television, radio, and, and movies. Let's focus our media. eyes on social media, yes. And let's focus our eyes on the Lord. And, you know, he asks us mm -hmm. to take off the old self and put on the new self. And we should remember that. And as we put on the new self on this Shabbat, let's remember to love one another and care for one another and look at those things and not anything else. Don't let anything negative come into our minds. Let's just be praising and thanking the Lord for choosing us. And let's just be smiling. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat shalom. <clears throat> yes, we welcome you. We're happy to be here with all of you. And uh, we are happy that you are part of our Shuv Yisrael of the Palm Beaches, either local congregation or online congregation. We welcome you and we're thankful that you are here. I'm Dr. Charlie Kluge and I'm the rabbi at Shuv Yisrael of the Palm Beaches. Yeah. So for all of our visitors all over from wherever you come from, we welcome you from from your, our home to yours. Yeah. Enter into our home. Enter into the Shabbat, Shabbat the sh Shalom yeah. Yeah, of God. our God. Peace. Hallelujah. Amen. The peace of our God. And we begin with an Erev Shabbat modified liturgical service. And we begin with the, the uh, Greenberg Sidor, and we're on, we're on page three and page four. Lakado di, likrat kala, pene shabbat nekabla, shamor vizachor, bidbor echad, hish vianu el achamiyochad. Adonai Echad Shemo Echad. The same Utiferet Belitila, the Kado di, the Grat Kala, Pene Shabbat, the Kabla. Come, my beloved, to welcome the bride, the presence of Shabbat we receive. Observe in, and remember, in one divine utterance, we heard from the one and only God. The Lord is one and his name one for renown, for splendor, and for praise. Come, my beloved, to welcome the bride, the presence of Shabbat we receive. Shake off the dust, arise. Dress in garments of glory, my people, through the son of Jesse the Bethlehemite. Redemption draws near to my soul. Come, my beloved, to welcome the bride, the presence of Shabbat we receive. Wake up, wake up, for your light has come. Awaken, awaken, sing a song, for the glory of the Lord is revealed to you. Come, my beloved, to welcome the bride, the presence of Shabbat we receive. Amen. Amen. And we continue on page 12. Remember the Shabbat day to keep it holy. Six days shall you labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Shabbat of the Lord, your God. In it you shall not do any work. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. That is why the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Speak also unto the children of Israel, saying, Above all, my Shabbats, my Shabbatot, you shall keep 
for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations that you may know that I am the Lord who sanctifies you. Amen. Now on page 13, we read the blessing of Mashiach. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaAlam Asher Natan Lanu Et Derech HaYeshua B'Mashiach Yeshua. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has given us the way of salvation in Messiah Yeshua. Amen. Amen. And now we stand and face east. And we say together, Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kavod Machuto Le'elam Va'ed Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Blessed be his name, whose glorious kingdom is forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now we continue the Shema with the Yahavta, on page 15, Yahavta et Adonai Elohecha, Bakal Lavavaka, Ubakal Nafshika, Ubakal Ma'adecha, Bahayu Haravaim Haele Asher Anoki, Nasavaka, Hayom Alevacha, Vishanantam Levenacha, Vidibata Bam, Vishiptaka Vavetaka, Vulektaka Vadarech, Vishak Bako Ukumecha, Ukshatam Laod Ayedecha, Bahayu la tata fo fene necha, uktavtam amazuzot be techa, vishirecha. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And have these words which I command you this day be upon your heart. And you shall teach them diligently to your children, and speak of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way when you retire and when you arise, and you shall bind them for a sign upon your hand and let them be frontlets between your eyes. And you shall write them on the doorpost of your house and upon your gates. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. And we ask the question, Mi chamocha elim adonai? Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, glorified in holiness? You are awesome in praise, working wonders, O Lord. Who is like you, O Lord? And the answer is, Ain Kamocha, there is none like him. There is none like you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And so we say, We give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy forever endures. Amen. Now we continue on page 21. Again, of the green, you just turning in now. Again, to the uh, page 21 in the Greenberg Siddur. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Velohe Avoteinu. Elohe Abraham, Elohe Yitzchak, Velohe Yaakov. Ba'el Hagadol Hagibor Vahanara. El Elyom Gomer Hasadin Tovim. O Bezocher Chaste Avot. Vumevi Goel Lifnei Vinehem Lama Anshimo Vahava. Melech Ozer O Mashiach O Magain Baruch Ata Adonai Magain Abraham. And we just read, Blessed are you, Lord our God and God of our fathers, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob, the great, mighty, and awesome God, the most high God who bestows grace and creates all and remembers the kindnesses of the fathers and brings a redeemer to their children's children for his name's sake with love. O King, helper, savior, and shield, 
Blessed are you, O Lord, shield of Abraham. Amen. We read on page 24, you, O Lord, are mighty forever. You raise the dead. You are mighty to save. You sustain the living with grace, resurrect the dead with abundant mercy, uphold the falling, heal the sick, set free those in bondage, and keep faith with those that sleep in the dust. Who is like you, master of mighty deeds? And who can compare to you, king who causes death and restores life and makes salvation sprout? And you are faithful to resurrect the dead. Blessed are you, O Lord, who resurrects the dead. Amen. Amen. And tonight, when we do the Kaddish, we remember Saul Joseph Kluge, my dad, who uh, he, he passed away 53 years ago. Wow, long time ago, a long time ago. And we read, Yitkadal, Yitkadash, Shemei Rabbah, V'yalman Tavrach, Ruteh, V'yamlich, Machuteh, V'chayei Chom, V'yom Echon, V'chayei Dechol, Beit Yisrael, V'aglav, Zman, Kri, V'imru Amein, Yehei Shemei Rabbah, Mavarach, L'Olam, L'Amei Amaya, Yitbarach, V'shtabach, V'yipa'ah, V'yiramah, V'yitnaseh, Amen. And what we read was magnified and sanctified be his great name in the world, which he has created according to his will. May he establish his kingdom during your life and during your days, during the life of the whole house of Israel, even swiftly and soon, and say, Amen. Let his great name be blessed forever and to all eternity. Blessed, praised, and glorified, exalted, extolled, and honored, magnified, and lauded be the name of the Holy One. Blessed is He. Though He be high above all the blessings and songs, praises, and consolations which are uttered in the world, and say, Amen. The departed, Saul Joseph Kluge, whom we now remember, has entered into the peace of life eternal. He still lives on earth in the acts of goodness he's performed and in the hearts of those who cherish his memory. May the beauty of his life abide among us as a loving benediction. And may he who makes peace in his high places make peace upon us and upon all Israel. And we say, Amen. Amen. Praise God. And now we will have our two songs of praise and worship. And let's see. And our first song is Haveno Shalom. Thank you. <laughs> First song is Havenu Shalom Alechem, and that is by Joshua Aaron, and it was not by him, but he's singing it. And the second is Hatov Shimcha by Steve McConnell. <laughs>
Joshua. Hashem. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Steve McConnell. Thank you, Lord, and may your name in all ways be blessed. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 
Shabbat Shalom again, family and friends. This is the time that we take up an offering for Shuvi Israel. And just to remind you, we are a Jewish ministry and we bless the Jewish people of Israel and the nations and also the people in Palm Beach County and Boca and the whole Southeast Regional. And how do we do this is we work with the local organizations. We work with the Jewish Federation, Jewish Family Services, and we take care of Holocaust survivors. And so we really would appreciate it if you would bless our ministry. Now, I'm going to give you um, something the Lord's been speaking to me about. It's in Ecclesiastes 7, and the Lord is talking about wisdom and money. And this is what verse 11 says, Ecclesiastes 7.11. Wisdom is as good as an inheritance, and even better for those who see the sun. For wisdom is a shelter, as money is a shelter. But the advantage of knowledge is this. Wisdom preserves the life of the one who possesses it. So it's not money that preserves our life. It's not money that keeps us safe and keeps us well, but it is wisdom and that we should really hold on to. But the Lord is saying, give and it will be given unto you, press down and overflowing. And so we need to give offerings. We need to tithe, we need to give because that is what the Lord is asking it to do. And but hold on to wisdom that will keep us safe and keep us well. So if you'd like to give an offering tonight to Shuvi Israel, you can go to our website, shalompalmbeaches.com, or you can go to our PayPal on our Shuva page, or you can get our free Temple Connect and just press the donate button. Thank you so much for so many of you who are part of our, our ministry. We just are so excited to see the Jewish people coming to know their Messiah. Amen. 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 And with, <clears throat> with Hanukkah coming up next month, we have yes. other things, is a whole lot of things we'll be able to do to serve a Jewish exactly. community. Yes. And um, we get asked for every feast and every festival and, or, and, and things in between. So it's really a blessing to be able to do that. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay. <clears throat> Tonight, we are going to speak about, of course, the Parsha is Chaye Sarah. And we are speaking about live your life and make it count. Now, we will speak, we'll first read from the the hebrew for that we're going to read from the first few verses and then i'll read it in english vayihu chaye sara mea shana ve'esrin shana ve'sheva shanim shnei chaye sara v'tamat sara v'kiryat abba hi chevron the Eretz Kenaan, the Yavo Abraham, the Spod, the Sara, the Liv Ketukota, the Yakom Abraham, the Al Pene Meto, Geveto Shav, Anohi Imachem Tenu Li, Achuzat Kever. Hever imachem, the ech bra meti mil fainav. Vaya anu vene het et Abraham. Amen. And what we read was in uh, Genesis 23, verses 1 through 5. Now Sarah's life was 127 years, the years of Sarah, Sarah's life. Sarah died in Kiryat Abba, 
And it's interesting, in Kiryat Abba, it is thought that it got its name because it's thought that in that, that cave of Machala, where, where um, Abraham bought the, where, where Abraham bought the uh, burial plot from Ephraim, um, it supposedly, and again, I, no one knows if this is correct or not, but according to um, Jewish history, supposedly Adam and Eve are, are buried there, and Abraham and Sarah and Isaac and Rebecca and Jacob and Leah, four couples. And so that's why it's called the city of four. And uh, so Sarah died in Kiryat Abba, that is in Hebron. In the land of Canaan, Abraham came to mourn for Sarah to weep over her. Then Abraham rose from before his dead one and spoke to their sons of Chet, saying, I am an outsider, a ger, and a sojourner among you. Give me a gravesite among you so that I may bury my dead from before my presence. And the sons, now the verse five, the sons of Chet answered Abraham saying to him, listen to us, my Lord, you're a prince of God among us. Bury your dead, bury your dead in the best of our graves. None among us will withhold his grave from you to bury your dead one. Verse seven, then Abraham got up and bowed down to the people of the land, to the sons of Chet, and spoke with them saying, if you are of a mind to let me bury my dead from before my presence, listen to me, plead with Ephraim, son of Zophar, on my behalf, that he may, gi that he may give me the cave of Machpelah that belongs to him. And this is at the end of his field at the full price, at the full price, let him give it to me in your midst for a grave site. So then um, verse 10 says, now Ephron was sitting in the midst of the sons of Chet. Ephron the Hittite answered Abraham in the ears of the sons of Chet, all those who enter the gate of the city saying, no, my Lord, listen to me. The field I hereby give to you, also the cave that is in it, I give it to you in the eyes of the sons of my people, I hereby give it to you, bury your dead one. And then as, as the conversation went, is Abraham said, well, no, I thank you for giving it to me. Tell me how much it is and, and I will pay you the full amount. I will pay you the full amount. And um, he said, oh no, oh no, don't, you don't have to, you don't have to pay me the full amount. I will, I will give it to you. I mean, what's 400 shekels? And he said, what's 400 shekels? I, it might have been that that was his way of saying, of saying, yeah, I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. Yeah, what's 400 shekels? Because maybe he knew that when Abraham heard that, he would take out the 400 shekels and he would pay it. It's, Ephron, might, he might have wanted to give it to him. Or maybe he didn't really want to give it to him, but in the eyes of everyone, they all said, oh, just take a piece of land. And maybe he really wanted to hold on to it. But on the other hand, why didn't Abraham take it? And Abraham didn't take it, why he wanted to pay for it, I believe is because he had the promise of God that that land was going to be his. So he didn't have to. So it was his way of just giving, Abraham was a man of kindness and it was his way of giving it, to, giving it and saying, and, and showing that, yes, I know God has given us this land and I want to just make it a double blessing by the fact that I'm going to purchase this for all the descendants after me. So I think it was something good that Abraham did, that he gave the four, whole 400 shekels. And that's what we should do. We should always realize that the more we give, the more we receive. And we don't give to receive. 
but we get the blessings. And it's so wonderful to get the blessings. So, uh, so now, and, and ver chapter 24, verse one, now Abraham was old, advanced in years, and Adonai blessed Abraham in everything. He, Abraham was blessed in everything. And in the Haftarah, we read about David, and we'll read that in a, in a few minutes, but we read about David, and look at the difference between Abraham and David, both amazing men of God. Abraham was a man of peace and a man, uh, and yet, yet when he had to fight, he fought and he won, he had victory. But he was a man of peace, a man of love, a man of kindness. And throughout his whole life, he had all the blessings of God. David also, um, he was a warrior. David was a warrior. And he was gifted in, in that. And he was a, a gifted man of God, a tremendous man of God, very gifted. Unfortunately, at his end of his life, as we read in the Haftorah per, portion, which is 1 Kings 1, we read how, and, and First Kings 2, he was so, when he was old, he was so cold that he couldn't even, even getting into bed, couldn't even warm him, warm him up. And it's, it's unfortunate that we have two great men of God, and um, just the way God works it is sometimes people have all the blessings, and many times, many times in our life, we hear people who have blessings of God, and yet people get jealous and envy because we have the blessings of God. And I know what we do is when we hear people have the blessings of God, we're so thankful to God for them, and we say, praise God and let them be blessed. And that should be an attitude, we should learn that, we should learn that from Abraham, that we should just be blessed. Whoever is blessed, we should be blessed for them. Because it's not about us. We have to take our eyes off of ourselves and put it on our God, our Lord. And so life has its challenges. And how we deal with them determines how we live our life. And if we go through all the challenges of life, just focused on God and focused on his word and never giving up because God does not want us to give up. God wants us to keep going forward, going forward, going forward. He wants us to be strong and have his strength and have his power. He's the one who loves us. He's the one who takes care of us. So how do we live our life? How do we make it count? We make it count by following God's word and following, and following the role models. Abraham was a role model. Uh, David was a role model. Solomon was a role model. Yeah, everyone had their faults. Everyone did, had their areas where they were in sin and, and made, made errors and had to pay for it. But that's like us. We've all, we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So let's see how our role models, and tonight we speak about, we speak about Abraham and Sarah. And we see um, that in Judaism, we have to take some and we have to bury them. And we're supposed to bury them as soon as, as possible. It used to be that that day, and probably in Orthodox, it still is that day. But um, in most, with most Jewish people around the world, they they don't do it right in that day. It's usually a day or two after because it takes time for family who are all over the world are uh, to come in for the funeral. Whether they're in Israel, whether in America, wherever wherever the people are, we um, it, it takes some, it takes some time, but. Um, but burying, burying the dead is showing honor and respect to the memory of his or her life. And tonight it's giving 
memory. Uh, it's, it's giving honor and respect to the memory of Sarah. Mm -hmm. And it's by giving her, it was given to her a proper burial. Abraham made sure he, he gave her a proper burial. And, um, and that's one of the essential concepts of Judaism. So 5,000 years later, we still continue the same cycle. And that's why some of us just, we really enjoy doing the life cycle events, weddings and funerals and unveilings and uh, wrist circumcision, um, because it's, it's sharing God's word, sharing about Yeshua with the people, with, with our people in different, in different cycles of life. And it's so beautiful to share and teach them. This is when we, we teach our children and we have to te diligently teach our children. We should be teaching them the ways of Yeshua, teaching them the ways of the word of God, teaching them the ways of our Judaism and, and blessing our, our children. When we, when we read the Haftorah portion, the Haftorah portion is 1 Kings 1, 1 Kings 1, and when we read 1 Kings 1, beginning at verse 1 through, and then through 6, now King David was old, advanced in years, though they covered him with clothes, he could not keep warm. So his servant said to him, let them seek a young virgin for my Lord, the King, and let her attend the King and be his nurse and let her lie by your side. So my Lord, the King may keep warm. So they sought for a beautiful girl throughout all the territory of Israel and found Avishag, the Shunammite and brought her to the King. The girl was very beautiful, so she became the king's nurse and served him, but the king was not intimate with her. Now, Adonia, son of Hagi, exalted himself, saying, I'll be king. So he prepared for himself chariots, horsemen, and 50 men to run before him. His father had not scolded him at any time by asking, why have you behaved this way? He was also a very handsome man, and he was born after Absalom. And um, we know, of course, what happened is Bathsheba stepped in and asked David to keep his promise that her son Solomon would become king. And so, um, unfortunately, the what's called the inelegant um, end of David's reign led to Solomon's um, execution of his brother, Adoniah and also the military chief, Yoav, and David's military, uh, who is, and, and that uh, eventually led to Rehoboam's, Rehoboam's tragic era, which divided the kingdom of Israel. So we see that the trouble David had, he was a warrior and there was constant trouble that he had through his life. Again, a major man of God, um, the in those times the Melech Yisrael and one of his descendants became the eternal Melech Yisrael Yeshua HaMashiach but the end of his life was just so difficult and yet we compare it to to Abraham's life and the end of Abraham's life was so wonderful and so beautiful and he and his wife were together till her end and um, we don't know why but but God allows certain things for certain people and so what we have to do is live our life and just make it count and we have to I, I read this meditation from my father my king says um, says here your father your king the creator and sustainer of the entire universe saying to you everything that i cause to happen in your life is for your ultimate benefit trust in my absolute love and concern for your total welfare your view of life is limited some things you will recognize immediately as beneficial 
In other situations, you will need to wait a bit before recognizing that the event was for your good. So uh, we have to understand, things take place in our life. That, you know, we've been speaking a lot lately about tumultuous times, chaos and battles and all this, and all this is going on. But God allows these things to happen. We have no idea why, but we're not God. And thank God we're not God because we messed up our lives and, and messed it up by our sin. And that's why he came for, because all of us have messed it up, not just, not just one person. Every single one of us have messed up our lives. And that's why he had to send Mashiach so we could repent and come to know the Messiah and have his spirit living within us rather than the world spirit living within us. So whatever we are going through now, whatever it is, we have to live it, live our life and remember that God is still in charge. He's still on the throne. And um, we have to remember whatever happens, happens for our benefit. God doesn't want us to perish. He allows things to happen. And we could all go back to think of things that happened before we came to know our Messiah. And when we look at some of those things, we say, oh my gosh, your hand was upon me the whole time. So we have to be aware of the love that he has for us, that his love is total, that his love is everything. His love was in everything that took place for our, for our good. His love ex enables us to experience joy, joy, heavenly joy throughout our, throughout our life. It, it frees us from, um, from pain. It frees us from suffering. Yes, we have pain. Yes, we have suffering, but that's not the end. He gives us the strength to battle it out. And if it's his will, we overcome the pain and we overcome the suffering. And, and even when pain and suffering are inevitable, it is for our ultimate benefit. It makes, it makes us easier to bear knowing that he's in charge and he's still there with us. And I see so many of the people who we pray for all the time um, who, have been, who have been suffering with different, with different things, heart problems, cancer, and all different types of things. God has given them the strength to be victorious and, and they just hang in there. And, um, and I see that. And as things happen to us, we all have different aches and pains and different things, different things. Um, uh, we all have things. What's that? But God helps us all. But God helps us get through. He helps us get through all these things. And, um, and remember, he's given us his free will, our free will, and we can choose. We can choose to view our life in ways that will cause us unnecessary misery. We can choose to be miserable. We can choose to listen to all the words that we hear in our mind. We can choose to suffer. We can choose the distress. We can choose the misery. But we can choose to overcome in spite of it. And I think of, um, what's his name, Russell Crowe in The Beautiful Mind. And you saw how at, at the end, and of course it was based on a true story, but you saw how at the end, um, he still saw those things that threw him off track, those people that, that he believed were really, that had believed that they were really there. But then he realized they are not real. He, after years, he got to believe that. And he, Right, and he knew it was his imagination, and he looked, and he wanted to say that, and then he just walked away, and he didn't have to bother with that, and sometimes it still bothered him, but he still looked away, and for the rest of his life, he was able to, um, to have, a successful, have a successful life. 
And that's what God wants for us. God wants for us to make the choice, make the choice to live our life. Remember, and remember, life and death are in the power of the tongue. We can speak the things that will, can cause death. We can speak the things that, call life, that can cause life. If we repeat the words of the Lord and the Lord's decrees, we're bringing life and truth to us, to our mind, to our body. If we speak the words that the evil one would want us to believe, we're bringing death, we're bringing misery, we're bringing distress into our situations. When we believe what the evil one says and, and speaks in our mind, and, and tells us to be angry with someone, tells us don't forgive this person, tells us things that are against God, we are sucked into a, a time of hopelessness and fear and discouragement. We, we end up speaking out words of defeat and destruction. That's not life. That is what the enemy, what the evil one wants for us, Hasatan, the accuser. But we have to live our life by making it count. Amen. We are not to give Hasatan the power to bring forth defeat and destruction in our life. He only brings it, can only bring it forth if we choose to allow him to bring it forth in our life. Otherwise, we stick with God and focus on God he has given us life, and he's given us life abundantly because he's given us our Messiah, our Mashiach. So he has revealed to us his word, and in his word, when we follow his word, then we make our life count. So many times, even here now in in, in where we live and in the world. When I say where we live, I'm talking about in, in, in America, in Israel, in different countries, there are threats for what you believe. There are threats, there's intimidation. But threats and intimidation do not change his word and it should not change our life. We must stay intimate with Hashem. We must live through the power he has given us. We have to live through it. We have to trust him. We have to live our life and make it count. Remember, the quality of our life is not dependent on our emotions. On our, it's not dependent upon our success. It's not dependent upon our finances, it's not dependent upon our, our clothes or our houses or our cars. It's not dependent on any of that. The quality of our life is truly dependent upon our intimate relationship with the God of all creation. So when there are frustra frustrations in our life, even when even sometimes there are tragedies and what we have to do is get past them we must get past them we mourn we we um uh we have hurts we have wounded hearts we have all these things but even in the midst uh, even in the midst we have to stay intimate with god and if we can't if we don't understand we don't understand God, then then we have to just cry out to him, saying, we don't understand, I don't understand. Why are you allowing this to happen? And I always use the uh, the example of the uh, movie Ushbazim from Sukkot, what Mo Moshe Malanga, he, he always ran out of it again. I don't understand why I'm doing this and I'm doing that. God used it. And at the end, you see the blessings that he got. And we have to remember that every life situation is an opportunity for growth. It's a test. It's a it's it's a lesson for us, so we can so we can grow. If 
it's it's then at the end of our life we can say our life was good yes we had our trials we had our tribulations we had our years of goodness of good we had our years of bad but at the end of our life if we are still intimate with god and we've experienced his warmth no matter what happened no matter what the years had for us even if they even if they were problem years whatever they were if we are still intimate with god and we know we're ready to die then we can say tov ma'od it was very good because we went from intimacy with god to being to going to be with him one twinkle of an eye and that's all it takes that's what that's what determines the quality of our life our intimacy with our god and it can only be through the power of the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit of God that he has put in us. That's why Yeshua came to come for us so we could have salvation. So when we die, we could live with him forever and ever. And so when we're alive, we have the Spirit of God, the Ruach Elohim, the Spirit of God, the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit of God that was in him is also within us and we can live our life on earth with his spirit we'll still have our frustrations we'll still have our good times and bad times we'll still lose people that we that we love there'll still be great things wonderful miracles and there'll still be tragedies there'll be all good and all bad there'll be everything but it's we have to understand throughout it all if we keep our intimacy with God, then we are making every day count. You see, it's the spirit of the anti-Messiah that, that as we read in, in uh, Bereshit chapter three, um, it's the spirit of the anti-Messiah that tries to push us, push us, push mankind off track with God. It started in the Gan Eden, in the Garden of Eden, and every story, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Saul, David, Solomon, Israel, um, everything, everything is, is God trying to keep us in spite of what's happening. There is an evil one. There is an anti-Messiah. That try to get every single person off track. David and Bathsheba. What um, the evil one tried to get him off track. But that's why God gives us repentance. And that's why repentance, God decided repentance before creating us. He knew that we were only human and we will and the evil one will try to get us off track but through repentance and with constant love and kindness as abraham was and how sarah was with constant love and kindness we will we will overcome so today deception lies depression division anger bitterness frustration all come all attack us through the spirit of the anti-messiah whose purpose is to throw us off track of god the purpose of the anti-messiah for us is he tries Hilul hashem to curse the name of god but we have to be strong and kedush hashem and bless the name bless the name of god and we read in uh, Luke chapter 24, verse 21. That's Luke chapter 24, verse 21. But we were hoping that he was the one about to redeem Israel. 
Besides all this, today is the third day since these things happened. So they, all the, the um, Talmudim, the disciples, they were so close and so intimate with him. And they learned from him. But they didn't realize, even though he spoke it, they did, just didn't grasp it. We can understand none of us would have grasped it. And they were hoping that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And he is the one who redeems Israel, who has redeemed Israel and will always redeem Israel. And this is the third day. And they thought, they hoped, they believed that Yeshua was the Messiah, the Redeemer of Israel. And But how could that be? He was crucified. He was dead and buried. And now it's the third day since it happened, which means that because they believed in resurrection Jewish people always believed in resurrection so it was now the third day it can't happen what 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 can happen now it's too late they had too much disappointment in their hearts they were leaving Jerusalem well can you identify of course we know that Yeshua revealed himself to them we know story but can you identify have you ever hoped and believed that God was going to redeem a situation you're in a situation that even people have prophesied to you that you will get out of this situation and and God will give you a new beginning but it goes on and on and you you, you're in the same situation. You found yourself losing your heart, losing heart. You're waiting, but you're losing heart. What do we do? What do we do when we're losing our heart? When, when we're waiting and praying and believing, yet it seems like everything's falling apart. We trust. Right. We trust. Sometimes we're in a lonely place. Because why? Usually we're in a lonely place because of pride. We don't want to admit to ourselves what's happening. We don't want to admit to others. We don't want to even say to God. We don't want to tell him our true feelings. God knows we have to trust him. What we do sometimes is that inner turmoil. We try to push it down and push it down. And put, paste on one of those smileys on our face and say, have a nice day. <laughs> and say, oh, it's all good. Well, the truth of the matter is, it is all good, but we have to believe it. Believe. It's not all good if we don't believe it. We have to believe it. And scripture reveals in Luke 24, 15, that as the disciples were walking to Emmaus, that Yeshua approached and began traveling with him. Yeshua drew near to them in their hopelessness. There was such hopelessness. He drew near to them. They were fearful. They were doubting. He walked with them. He talked with them. And he gave them the hope that they needed. They didn't possess their peace. But all of a sudden, there was a peace that came upon them. That's what happens to us when we trust and we're intimate. That's what happened with Abraham. We saw that last week in the Akita, the binding of Isaac. He trusted God. And even though Yeshua taught them, Yeshua taught them that troubled times are coming. We know today troubled times are coming. Here. Troubled times are here, and it will get worse. But Yeshua is with us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. These things I've spoken to you so that in me you may have shalom. In the world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. A teaching of peace. That's what Yeshua did with them on the road to Emmaus. 
And sometimes, I'm sure each and every one of us have had times where we've been so upset and we just get into the presence of God. And all of a sudden, it's like all upon us. His shalom, shalom comes. And it's that, that, that spirit of fear and doubt and, and lack of peace like that flies away. We just feel that. And he taught them that so they wouldn't lose their peace. Maybe so many of the things we've gone through in our life, maybe God has allowed it because when the trouble really comes, he wants us, we, all of us, who are believers in him, who, is, who he's given us his power, he's given us his blessings, he's given us his favor. He wants us to be strong. He wants us to be a model to our people, especially our Jewish people in the times of trouble. How can you be smiling? How can you be so happy though, Estes? Because we have that relationship with our God. Well, I have a relationship with God. Oh, praise God. You know the Messiah? Well, no, I know you're supposed to come. Well, he came. He's here. He's everywhere. He's, he's God. He, he lives, he's given us his spirit. His name, is Yeshua. his name is Yeshua. His name means salvation. You know, you might have heard him called, he called Jesus. Oh, you believe in Jesus? Don't say, oh. <laughs> I have happiness and joy. Mm -hmm. Why? I have it because God lives within me. You're fearful. I'm not. Because he's the Jewish Messiah. Well, is he going to help you? Yes, he's going to help you. He's going to help me. He's going to help you. All you have to do is believe in him. That's all. You believe in God? Yeah, of course I do. You believe he, he split the Red Sea? Yeah, of course I do. Well, everything you read about him, you go on and you tell about his miracles. And you tell about who he is and why he had to come. And many people choose. Remember I said earlier, we each have our free will. Many people choose to believe so what are we looking for what are we looking for in our life we need to be looking for what abraham looked for he trusted god we need to he looked to find god he found god he spent his intimate time with god we need not to be complacent in our faith you know, Moses, uh, God said to Moses, you have begun to show your servant your greatness and your strong hand. What do you mean you have begun? After Moses was this model, model of God, a type of Mashiach. And he just, God said, you've begun. So no matter how much we attain, no matter how many revelations we receive, no matter how many times we're touched by God's glory, we must keep it within us we must and then spread it spread it out keep that spirit within us and spread it spread it to our people we must walk in his ways we must abide in him we must defeat the spirit in our life the spirit of anti-messiah god already beat him god already has the victory we just have to stay with yeshua he is the one who had the victory stay with Yeshua. And if we stay intimate with Yeshua, then the anti-Messiah is defeated in our life. And he might be trying to defeat us, but he can't win because our Yeshua, his spirit is within us. And, and we, he has the victory. Like Sarah, we must live our life and make it count. And as Psalm 90 says, teach us to number our days so that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.
The Lord bless you and keep you. Ya'er Adonai Penevelecha Vikonecha. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Yisa Adonai Penevelecha, Yisem Lecha Shalom. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you shalom, shalom, b'shem, yeshua, m'shekenu, b'sa shalom. May he grant you peace, perfect peace, in the name of Yeshua, our Messiah, the Prince of Peace. Amen and amen. Amen. Praise God. So again, if you like, if you if our ministry is a blessing to you then we ask you to please bless our ministry you can and go on our website to shalompalmbeaches.com or go on to our facebook page or in the temple connect you can just um, hit donate please follow like and share our facebook page and if you have any prayer requests or questions please email me at drcharliek at aol.com. We will pray for you. We will um, answer your questions. And we desire to just bless God. And we thank you because all of you are a blessing to God. Shalom, shalom. And Lord willing, we'll see you next Wednesday night at 7.30. Yes, sir. Be safe, stay healthy, yeah. and be blessed. Yeah. Sha'alu shalom Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace yeah. of Jerusalem. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. amen and amen.